Hello, today we will be demonstrating a simple electromagnet and the linear correlation between the current flowing through it and the strength of the field it produces. But what is an electromagnet and how does it work? You've probably heard of regular magnets before. They have a north and south pole. Opposite poles attract and like poles repel. One of the problems with a regular magnet is that there's no way to turn them off, which is why they're also called permanent magnets. Electromagnets solve this by using the fact that all current carrying wires produce a magnetic field. A coil of wire, or solenoid, uses many small coils which each create small, weak magnetic fields. This way, they can create a larger overall field when coiled together. A ferromagnetic core, typically made out of iron or an iron containing material, is used to increase the strength of the electromagnet. This is how an electromagnet works. We will be demonstrating the linear correlation between the current given to an electromagnet and the strength of the field it produces. Here are some formulas. H is the strength of the magnetic field in the middle of the solenoid. I is the current flowing through the solenoid. N is the number of coils in the solenoid. And L is the length of the solenoid, shown here. B is the magnetic flux density, which we're measuring. Mu is a constant, which we don't need to worry about just yet and H was, as previously mentioned, the field strength. So, how does this depict a linear correlation? N and L, the number of coils and the length of the solenoid respectively, are both constant. This means that I is proportional to H. Mu is a constant as well, so this also means that I is proportional to B. Wait, isn't H the strength in the middle of the solenoid? If we're measuring from outside, how is there still a linear correlation? Because the distance from the center of the solenoid is kept constant, the linear correlation is unaffected. Now that we understand what an electromagnet is and the linear correlation between current and field strength, let's try an experiment. For this experiment, you will need a nail, some wire, some tape, preferably electrical tape, some small connectors as shown in the image, a breadboard, a push button, a DC power supply with adjustable current, a pair of scissors, and a phone running Firefox with a magnetometer available. Make sure the magnetometer is accessible. If the button is grayed out, then it means your phone either does not have a magnetometer or it's inaccessible to Firefox. The magnetometer must be accessible for this experiment to work, so try a different phone. After you've verified the availability of the magnetometer, the first step is to wrap tape around the nail or screw. Wrapping tape will make coiling the wire later easier. The next step is to wind the wire around the nail or screw on top of the tape that you just wrapped. Make sure to leave some wire sticking out on the ends so it can be connected to the power source later. Using your pair of scissors, you will need to remove the insulation on the ends of the wire. Do this on both sides and make sure that you see the insulation coming off and the wire becoming more shiny. Both ends of the wire should look similar to this on both sides. Now, attach the connectors to the negative and positive terminals of the DC power supply. Plug one of the connectors into the breadboard, plug in the push button, and plug in the third connector, as shown in this image. Make sure the two connectors are connected to the opposite corners of the push button. Finally, connect one end of the electromagnet to one of the connectors from the DC power supply, and the other end to the connector from the breadboard. Now, we are ready to begin the experiment. In Firefox, first, navigate to the magnetometer, and then, click the Absolute tab. Turn on the power supply and place the phone with the top next to the electromagnet. Start the Firefox recording with the play button. Observe what happens when you press the button. When you press the button, the circuit is completed and the current is allowed to flow through the electromagnet. This creates a magnetic field, which results in the magnetometer reading. As the button is held down, turning the current knob on the DC power supply also results in the changed reading. Turning it down decreases the magnetic flux density, as expected. 
turning the knob at a constant rate changes the magnetic flux density linearly, or so it seems. We can verify this linear correlation by testing a discrete set of currents, such as 0.5 amps, 1 amp, 1.5 amps, etc. We plotted the observable parameter B, the magnetic flux density, against the control value I, the current through the electromagnet. Data can be collected by conducting repeated trials with varying currents. For each trial, take the difference between the magnetic flux density when the electromagnet is on and when it is off. Then, compare this to the current in the trial. We hope you enjoyed this experiment and have learned something about electromagnetism. Mm -hmm.